Hey guys, subscribe for daily content. And if you're shopping for gear, make sure you check out the description for the newest items at some of the very best online retailers. There's also links for some of the items that I personally recommend. Thanks. What's going on YouTube? Metal Complex here and today I've got a very interesting knife review slash knife overview to share with you guys. This is the production CJRB Pyrite in all steel. Why are you emphasizing production? I have reviewed this knife, but I reviewed a prototype G10 version. Uh, at the time of this video, mm, all of the versions should be available. Whether you want G10, you want uh, Stonewash steel, or you want like a DLC, I think they do like an all black steel version, they should all be available. The price on these things is excellent. And uh, spoiler alert, I don't usually do this at the beginning of the review, this is a ridiculously nice knife. <laughs> <laughs> the price on it is great. Listen, um, I, I want you to stick around and hear my thoughts, right? If you want to hear the details, stick around. I have a lot to say, but this is a freaking good knife. It's, it's, it's stupidly good, right? So if that's all you wanted to know, then there you go. But if you want to hear my thoughts, stick around. Thanks so much to CJRB slash Artisan Cutlery for sending me a sample for review. This will be linked right down below in all forms. So at any time during this video, if you wanna check it out, use those links. It does help my channel, but that's up to you. Thanks to my patrons who are supporting me, and please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. All right, let's go ahead and uh, get some specs here real quick. Sorry, I was looking for my tape measure. Overall length of the CJRB Pyrite, same as the prototype variant, it is seven and a quarter inches. The blade length is coming in at about three and an eighth, and your cutting edge is coming in at about 2.85 inches. Let's go ahead and do some size comparisons up against the Ontario Rat Model 1 and the Ontario Rat Model 2. You can see that this, uh, see that this knife is very much a Rat 2 size knife. It is just a little bit bigger. I don't think we need to do too many size comparisons today, so I'm just gonna do a few more. Up against the legendary Demco AD 20.5, it is also very similar in size there. Let's do it uh, up against the Spyderco Para 3. Uh, definitely another similar, uh, similarly sized knife. And finally, the Benchmade Bugout, which it does bear a passing resemblance to, but as I said in the prototype review, these are generic knife lines. <laughs> the bug out, Benchmade did not invent these lines with the bug out, so nobody's copying anybody, right? This is like, if you open the dictionary and look up the word pocket knife, you're gonna basically see a knife that looks very similar to the bug out or pyrite. Um, let's go ahead and do carry profile. So, first off, the action. Is it good? Oh, boy howdy is it! That's not usually something that comes out of my mouth, so sorry. Sorry about that. Um, yeah, the action's very good. You just push the button and it drops. There's very little travel. I don't like button locks that have a lot of travel, right? It's just click and it goes. As far as deploying it, reverse flick, standard, right? Just using your thumb. Oh my gosh, it is very easy to manipulate. This is beautiful. This is how a button lock should be. Thank you. <laughs> Let's go ahead and do carry profile up against the Spyderco Para 3. You can see this guy is nice and thin, which makes it great, right? Just for a generic EDC, it's nice and thin. Uh, length and height up against the PM2 and the Para 3. You can see here that uh, it's just not going to be a cumbersome object in the pocket. But it's steel! We'll get to that here in a second. This is going to be real friendly, right? Unless you are wearing the thinnest of pant material, right? The, the waxiest of wax paper pants, right? It may not be your friend. Outside of that, for people who wear traditional pants with traditional pant material, you'll probably be okay. Let's go ahead and do a hardware check. I'm gonna get all my tools as per usual. My tools are very inexpensive and very recommendable. You can find them right down in the section of my description that talks about the tools I use on this channel. The pivot is going to be a T8. Um, to my knowledge, these are still free spinning. Right, so if we turn here, are we turning the other side? Yes, we are. It's one of the only flaws to this knife is that it has a free spinning pivot. Uh, there is way too much good here for that to be a deal breaker because guys, listen, it's literally, you just, you're gonna be inconvenienced enough to have to buy two drivers and two T8 bits, okay? Most of us, most of us watching this right now already have that. But it is something that I should point out because it is 2022 and it is weird to have a pivot that is not captive. I mean, it's weird, okay? But don't get hung up on that because there's a lot more good here. Um, these other screws, I uh, don't need to check them. They are T6, which is a bummer. I wish they were T8, but you know what? 
you can't always get what you want and it's very minimal. Actually, construction of this knife is very simple. It should not be difficult to take apart as long as you have quality tools and a place to put your hardware, you should be good to go. Okay, blade stock thickness, I believe it's the same as the prototype. It's very thin. Oh, yeah, there you go, 103 thousandths, nice and thin. Wait, that's important because this is steel. What do we have here? Get my other flashlight. What do we have here on the inside? There's actually quite a bit of milling. Yeah, good, because steel can definitely be heavy. Um, the G10 one is lighter. There's no difference in the price between the G10 one and the all steel frame, right? So just pick the one that you like. The steel guy here weighs 3.74 ounces. <gasps> Offensive, is it? 3.74 ounces? I don't think so. I mean, it weighs more than the G10 one. If it bothers you, buy the G10 one. But honestly, the, the slight extra heft on this guy, and we're talking, I think, probably three quarters of an ounce, if I remember correctly, something like that. You can check out my other video. With a knife that is as compact as this and as thin as it is, because truthfully, we are looking at a knife that is very similar in thinness to the bug out. The steel gives it a little bit of extra heft and it feels good. It makes the knife feel solid. It doesn't make, it makes it not feel like a delicate toy right? Which is kind of nice. $50 is not a lot of money, but then again, it's still $50, right? So it's nice to get something that does have the dimensions of something that easily folds up and goes in your pocket and feels like it's not taking up a whole bunch of room. But when you get it out, it doesn't feel like something that is, oh, I sneezed and my knife disintegrated, right? You know, like the bug out in the grivery scales. Sorry, bug out fans, but come on. You know exactly what I'm talking about. Those grivery scales, it feels like like a, just a, a, a weak gust of wind could carry your knife into the next continent, you know? Um, this feels a little more solid. So I kind of, I got to be honest with you, I, I kind of prefer the steel scales. Not something I usually say. Um, but uh, in this case, it actually feels really good and adds a weird X factor of like feeling of quality to the thing, you know? Um, anyways, let's go ahead and talk about this knife. This is the same pyrite that I reviewed, okay? Um, and if you haven't seen that video, I'll shorten it up. The ergonomics on this are very good. The shape of it is good because it is a generic shape. In fact, this is hardly an exciting shape of knife. It's a shape that we have seen many times. The blade is a drop point blade. The handle skills are shaped in a way that allow your hands to grab it and hold it because we have figured that out. <laughs> knife people, knife makers, knife manufacturers, knife designers have figured out how to shape the handle to make it fit the average person's hand, right? If your hands are like mine, if you wear an XL glove, you can get a four finger grip on this guy. You can choke up a little bit. Honestly, this area right here is fairly roomy because they were smart and didn't put a flipper tab on it. It doesn't need a flipper tab. The thumb stud deployment works fine. The G10 scales were, you know, great. And I'd still recommend, you know, doing that. They have the steel liners. Um, this guy here with the, with the steel scales, um, these are beautifully finished. Like the tumbled finish is great, but they have chamfered these down and it just gives it this nice, it's like I was saying, this solid, you can squeeze this thing and the scales are robust for being as thin as they are, right? Now, because all the weight or a lot of the weight is in the steel scales. This knife is balanced quite a ways behind the pivot, right? So if you're a big balanced schnab, um, then you might not like that. In hand, you can feel definitely, you know, holding onto the scales, you can feel like the, the butt end of the knife feels heavier and then it's a blade that feels, you know, really light. But with it still coming in under four ounces, it's really difficult for me to complain about it. It has me favoring the weight of the scales, the weight of the steel scales over the G10 ones because I just like that it feels so solid. It really does feel good. And because this is not a frame like, generally, I said frame lick, frame lock, Generally, the issue I have with steel is that, number one, we've got companies now in 2022 who are like, oh, we made the whole frame out of steel. That's a premium thing. Please pay us more money, right? No, steel frame locks have been around forever and you can get them really, really cheap, right? My biggest issue is that the, the company's trying to pass 
steel frames off of some premium thing. And number two, I really hate steel frame locks, right? I don't like frame locks in general as much as I used to because the lock is exposed and on a narrow frame, it makes it difficult to be like, where do I put my fingers so that I can deploy it and not too much, uh, put too much pressure on the lock bar. And also while I'm using it, I'm squeezing it. So I'm free, I'm, I'm squeezing that lock and the, the, you know, the, the face of the lock further and further into the tang of the blade, none of that's present, right? They didn't, uh, they didn't overcharge for this. They didn't try to pretend it was something special, right? It's not a frame lock, it's a button lock. So you don't have to worry about any of it. So I just get to enjoy the fact that it is steel and feels robust. And it is, I mean, it's the steel adds a little bit of durability to it, right? So I just like that. I'm not gonna sit here and say that you're gaining any specific benefit to the steel because truthfully, the G10 version will probably function just as well. I don't think that, you know, this is measurable durability, like it's gonna outlast it, right? Both the G10 version and the steel version have some steel in, you know, the integrity of the knife, right? So we're gonna say, well, the problem with the steel one is the steel can rust. Okay, the same thing applies to the G10 version because it still has it still has steel liners, right? Um, this is probably incredibly high, uh, highly stain resistant uh, steel. I know a lot of companies use 316, which is not, you know, it's like, unless you plan on like leaving your knife at the bottom of the ocean for long periods of time, it's probably not a big deal, right? Just wipe it off after you're done with it, you should be okay. Um, so I just, I don't know, I just like it. And again, with the, you know, with the price tag, it's just really hard, it's like, it's hard to complain. The, 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 you know, any benefits you lose with having a full steel frame, it's just, it's hard to, it's hard to be bothered by it because it feels so good. I like that they've carved this little area out for the thumb stud. I probably mentioned that in the review, but if not, I, I wanted to mention that. The other thing I like is there's definitely a clear mounting position for the pocket clip for left-handed people. And truthfully, left-handed people, um, you're gonna like this just as much, if not more, than right-handed people because it is very easy to deploy and manipulate with your index finger versus your thumb. Uh, either way, whether you are right or left-handed carry, you are not gonna depress that button accidentally. It's just not gonna happen, right? If you're choked up and you're squeezing as hard as you can, still not. You're gonna have to put your finger on that button and push it down. That's what's gonna have to happen right? Only in the rarest and unlikeliest of circumstances will that lock accidentally disengage. And the same could be said for literally any knife on the market. So I, I just don't want to zero in on that. This has a beautiful tumbled finish on the blade, which is great. Not, not enough companies do this. This knife in particular is just going to look awesome over time. There's no, you know, it's, it's not anodized titanium. It's not anodized aluminum, right? It's not coated. It's just steel that's been tumbled and a steel blade that's also been tumbled. So you mark it up, you, you ding it up, whatever. You know, it's just, it's not, it's hardly going to look any different than it does right now. Um, this is AR RPM 9, which is wonderful. This is one of the only, if not the only, powder form composition that you will find in budget territory. And when I say budget territory, on this channel, it's anything under $75. I like AR RPM 9. It seems to be, I mean, I haven't used it enough to say definitively, but from what I understand, it is a powder formed version of 9CR 18 MOV, which is a steel that people largely prefer in this territory. Um, it holds a good edge, takes a good edge, uh, edge. Why am I, what is wrong with me? It takes a good edge, will hold that edge for a reasonable amount of time. It's not gonna stand up to some of the, the super steels, right? It's not gonna be, you know, it's not gonna have S30V edge retention or anything like that. Um, but it's got reasonable toughness and it also is stainless, which, you know, that right there, whatever the balance is, that to me is a good budget steel, right? What's better, I think, um, than just the composition is the geometry of the blade. We have a little flat up here, carries out to a nice, yeah, just a nice tip. We have a, a really traditional drop point blade and then we have an edge, <laughs> it gets reasonably thin. This is gonna be a really straightforward, just utilitarian drop point blade. It's exactly what you want it to be on a knife like this. It's gonna do what you want it to do. This is not a hard use knife, right? It can take some abuse, sure. It's not a knife I would go out and baton or, you know, it's like, it's like, well, I need to like be able to throw my knife at landmines from, you know, a hundred yards. Well, this ain't it, you know, but uh, if you're gonna use your knife for knife stuff, then yeah, it's gonna be just fine. Fit and finish all the way around on this thing is just perfect. It's beautiful. Uh, this is um, some of CJRB's best work. And they've been hit or miss in the past. Same with Artisan Cutlery. 
This is gorgeous. It Everything works exactly the way that I want it to. That blade is just so ready to fall. I mean, <laughs> this thing. Button locks are incredibly convenient to manipulate. They're not just newfangled fidget toys for the modern folk. No, these are convenient and durable locking systems. They are reliable. It's faster than your old Buck 110, right? And it'll lock up just as fine for what you're going to do with it. So, you know, it's it's easy to categorize this stuff as like, oh, it's just unnecessary fiddly-faddly. No, it isn't. That's not, absolutely not. I think that's just a judgment that's passed, you know, by people who just really, really want their Buck 110 to have a place in the modern world. And I'm sorry, but that thing is dead <laughs> in terms of like what's available now, right? Better steel, better geometry, better ease of manipulation, better and more convenient carryability, right? If that's a word, eh, sorry. And so I don't mean to come in, come down on specifically the Buck 110, but these, you know, newfangled fiddly uh, fidget systems, right, absolutely have their place in this world far beyond, you know, those of us who do sit around and watch Netflix and flip our knives. I'm one of those people. But yeah, day to day, this is great. It's fantastic. Sorry, I went on a rant. There's probably like, you know, <laughs> very few people that would actually make that argument against me. But, um, you know, it's just, I've heard it before and I just think it's silly. Button lock knives are awesome. I like them more um, just for manipulation. I like them more than frame locks, right? Um, I honestly like them more than like the axis lock. There's very few locking systems that I like more than a button lock. Maybe, you know, say for like the shark lock or something like that. But I just like it. It's it's really it's really good. It does exactly what I want it to do. There's a little lanyard hole back here for lanyardy people, and that's fine. We've got a couple of uh, standoffs here, pillar construction. That's also fine. Um, we have a pocket clip that's almost perfect. Um, I really I don't like. It, it's got the taper, and then it has an abrupt dip. I really would have just appreciated continuous taper and then the dip. But you know what? That's real nitpicky. It is not recessed into the steel which would have been great, but it's not, no big deal. The screws are recessed into the clip at least. And this bill is not super pronounced, which means it's not gonna be ultra grabby. It's not gonna be hooking onto stuff as readily when you walk by. It's still a steel clip and steel is not very forgiving. It's not as good as titanium. I think CG CGRB might offer an aftermarket titanium clip. If not, that two hole spacing could not be very much different than a lot of the stuff we have out there. So I, I would venture to guess you could find a titanium clip for this if you really wanted to. But the stock clip is plenty good. On the steel, there is no texturing, so this should come in and out of the pocket very easily. In fact, I can tell you from experience, it does. Lock up, no blade play up, down, left, or right. Very minimal stick off a button. I always expect a little bit of stick, but this is very minimal. No, pivot lash, extremely smooth in here, extremely. Nice, right? This is a button lock, so it doesn't have a traditional detent, and then we are perfectly centered. Let me tell you something. The only thing that would have been this, I can choke down the clip and the T6 hardware. It's not really that offensive. The only thing that would have made this, I would have been over the moon. Imagine with me, right? They mill a little border right here, and within that border, they do some texturing. Horizontal, right? Diagonal or diamond texturing. It would have looked beautiful and added a little bit of meaningful traction, right? Could do it on the other side. Uh, the only problem is, is that, you know, you couldn't mill a bald spot for the clip. You could, but it'd be ugly because the clip is, you know, meant to be flipped to one side or the other. So you'd have to accommodate and, you know, make that same milling on the other side. That would have been great. It's a little smooth on the scales. The G10 one, I believe, is peel ply textured, so it's got a little bit more grip. Seriously, though, outside of that, this is uh, one of the most recommendable budget knives. Like, I, I can't tell you, and I just like the steel, right? If you like the G10, go with the G10. Either way, the Pyrite is absolutely one of the best budget knives it's, 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 it's one of the best button lock knives ever. It's one of the best button uh, budget uh, knives of 2022. And honestly, it's one of the best budget knives I've ever handled. This knife comes in at 50 bucks. Powder steel, button lock, bearings, good ergos, good blade geometry, wonderful fit and finish, right? 50 bucks whether you want the steel or you want the G10 one. Honestly, I'd go with the steel. I just like it, right? I just think it's great. This steel pyrite... <coughs> I try to separate like what I, you know, truly find is 
recommendable and beneficial for the average person. I try to separate that from my own personal, just like what I like as an enthusiast, right? Which is, it's it doesn't have to necessarily translate 100% to utility. So we are venturing out of my, revegu- my regular review process and into what does Metal Complex like just because he likes it. This steel pyrite is probably my favorite budget knife ever. I love this thing. And I've handled a lot of great knives and I like them for a lot of different reasons, right? This isn't the most impressive thing dollar for dollar for the materials, right? It's not like it's got the fanciest this or that or doesn't, right? I know that people want to latch on and be like, how can he say that? Because of value and material and blah. This is aside from the review. This is just me saying what I like just because I like it. I love how this carries. I love how it operates. I love how it feels. I love how it looks. It just does it, man. I love this. Uh, Buy this knife. This knife is incredible. (laughs) It doesn't matter. If you you like the steel, great. If you don't like the steel, go to the G10. Truthfully, this is recommendable to everybody. But if you want to know what I like the best, right? Just like going with my gut, the steel. Uh, The stonewashed steel version. I think this is one of the... This is just one of the best budget knives I've ever handled. I love it. I just think it's awesome. Um, let me say this. I think um, CGRB should uh, continue to make these and make them readily available. I think this is a knife that um, it's it's not only a recommendable knife. I think this is a knife that just everybody should just have in their collection. Uh, it, it's too good and it fits it, it fits too many just great just daily roles uh, for people. It, it's one of those things that I, I just feel like. Um, you know, if you're interested in the knife world, you got to have this. And, it, you know, it's got a generic enough shape and a ger- generic enough look. I don't know why I'm studying around this today. Um, that uh, it's going to appeal to a lot of people, right? I mean, sure, it's going to be boring, but it, it's going to appeal to a lot of people. And even if you're bored by the aesthetic, I can almost guarantee you'll find a use for this. It's just, it's it's too good. Um, I really, uh, I, I would love to see them do a version of this with texturing. I think it could be done, you know, and if they got to add a little bit to the price, then fine. Truthfully, this is what I want. I'd like to see them do, because Artisan Cutlery does the premium stuff as far as the CGRB Artisan Cutlery line goes. Um, do an Artisan Cutlery version in titanium and whatever steel, right? It doesn't have to be M390, but throw a premium steel on it and then make it bigger. Uh, I don't, I, I don't want to see exactly the same knife from Artisan Cutlery. Don't do that. Don't make this and just be like, titanium and M390, that'll be $250, thank you. Don't do that. Make it bigger, separate it, make it a different thing, right? Do a premium and a larger version. Um, that's just what I think. Um, do a, you know, eight and a half inches or so. That would be awesome and it would translate really well. And at that size, you would have to do it in titanium because otherwise the balance would be way off, right? Um, but uh, I think uh, truthfully you do that and then it, then there, there you go. If you need, if it's like, if the texturing is going to cost that much more, you know, on a manufacturing level, then add it to the premium one. Um, I think that would be really cool to see. I, I, I really like this design. I think it's awesome. Um, so yeah, this is going to go in um, three playlists, <laughs> which is rare. That does not happen on this channel a lot. It's going to go in my favorite knives of all time playlist because it is. I just love it. It's going to go on my recommended knives playlist because, yeah, I recommend it to pretty much anybody. And it's also going to go on my cheap knives I like playlist because it's not very expensive and I definitely like it. Uh, this is uh, this is one of those that hit all three. So, um, yeah, pick this up. You know, 50 bucks. Yeah, I'm really surprised they hit it at 50. I thought it was going to be more. Um, very cool stuff. Really great. from One of the best things that has come out of... Uh, CGRB and Artisan Cutlery. So anyways, I think that's going to be pretty much it today, guys. Thanks again to Artisan Cutlery and CGRB for sending this in to me. Uh, please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do, of course, have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like, so check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, go ahead and click on that Metal Complex logo right there and subscribe because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching, everybody, and have a great day.